Greetings, salutations, it's me, James, your BA Sensei, back with another Power Query tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be doing something rather excellent. We're going to take the source data over here, which is nothing but a couple of poor value investor portfolios with all the stocks at a specific date. So what we're going to do is users will specify parameters. Let's say they want to see the top five stocks in each portfolio. Then they simply say refresh. And this will give them the top five stocks in each of those portfolios. But if they want to see the bottom three refresh, then they got get the bottom three for each of those portfolios. It's going to be a magical session. So let me show you how to do it. All right, so let's get the data into Power Query. Select your data source, the ungrouped data, and go to data, and you say from table or range, and this opens Power Query for us. You see Power Query adds a little step there, change the data types, sensing the data types, which you did a pretty good job in this case. Our next step is to go to transform and group by, let's say advanced. We want to group by each portfolio, and we want to add an aggregation. We want to do the very first one is called total value because we want to get the sum of the total value of all stocks in the portfolio and then we want to do all rows which is simply the detail let me show you what that means we say okay and now it basically summarized each portfolio in our data set you can see there's 13 portfolios gave us the sum of all the stocks within the portfolio and then the table gives you the detail breakdown of each stock within each portfolio okay this is not what we want. Okay, so let's quickly look at the group rows M query we generated over here. Direct your attention to this list sum. That's not really what we want to do is we actually want to say max n. So we're going to use list max n to find the top five values of each of these portfolios. So I'm just going to say, okay. So now it returns a list. So what it did in this list is, so you can see that it's just a list over there and each of them now contains five items. Now, these five items basically represent the top five stock values within those portfolios. All right, so I'm just going to click on this over there. Our next thing is let's add a new column. So I'm going to say new step, add a column. Let's say table, add column. And in there, I'm simply going to say, yes, we want to add a new column called results. Yes. And shift space. And we're going to say each. Okay, before we go on, let me quickly explain to you what we're going to do. We're going to say for each of those five top values in the list, we want to find the stocks within this inner table, All right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say select rows out of this table. So we're going to use table select rows and we want to select rows from the detailed column, which is that nested table in there. All right, I need to now Take the value of the list and look at this inner table. I need to go into the inner table. So I'm going to declare a new variable called inner. Yes, and use a rocket ash. And I'm going to say list contains because this is a list over there. And I want to simply see if the list in total value, those five maximum stocks in each portfolio, right? Know what those values are. Now, can I match them kind of like doing a join from that and I say from the inner variable. So this inner table that we have over here, I want to look at I want to match it to the value column value column over there. Right. And we are going to close it out. And now this should return a new table and you can see each table now only has five records in them. Isn't that brilliant? So this is the fi top five stocks inside of each of these portfolios. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here. And I'm going to say remove all the other columns. I'm going to expand the specific data set. Go expand. Let's quickly check these data types over there. Oh, we don't need the portfolio column. I want to take the value and the shares over there and I want to convert that to whole numbers. Yes, there we go. There's the whole number over there. But now I also want to sort it. So I'm just going to say sort this by portfolio. But I also want to sort it by. So I'm going to do a, a double sorting over there. So I'm just going to copy that portfolio name and order ascending and paste it in there and replace that with value. So I'm going to sort this on both the portfolio and the value fields over there. So now you can see now we have a sorted list. So now if we rename this query to 
top five no perimeter. This will be called this query, and we're going to return it to Excel. There it is. There it is. Cool, now part two, let's go to the perimeters table. Let's get the perimeters into Excel as well. Okay, so I select this, I go to data, I say from table arrange, and this opens Power Query. Let's call this one user perimeter, right. Cool, and the very first thing that we do here is we can take the change type out there. We can now add a new step, say table transpose. And that transposes the table for us. We now go to transform and we say use the first row as the headers, right? And there we have the n number of values. Let's say I want to do the top three, four, five, and then top or bottom, right? So you can see that's what we have. N values are top or bottom. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to take this other query. I'm going to duplicate it, right? And let's call this one top n with perimeters, right? So all we need to do here is essentially we need to go, let's go to the advanced editor and we're just going to isolate because the only place we really want to work in, we want to parameterize is in the group rows step. So we group the rows, we say table group data and we group by portfolio name, right? And we know it's the total value, that's perfect. And we can take this section out over there. Cool, and that should still work. Let's take that out there. So we basically want to take that hard coding of the five out there, okay? And we're going to go and we're going to fetch that from the top five in perimeters. Let me quickly show you what we're going to do there. We're going to go into here, top five in. We're going to go to user perimeters, and we're going to use the first row, which is zero, and we're going to return this in values from there. Okay, so go back. We simply say there the query is called user perimeters. The column was called in values. And we were looking at the very first row. Cool. So I'm going to press done. Now I can see it's only three because the user perimeter is saying three. Brilliant. So that was successful. So now let's go back. Now what we need to do is I want to basically indicate if I have in my user parameters, I have bottom there, it needs to give me the bottom end. If I have top, it needs to be given the top end. I'm going to go back there. Let's quickly go back to advanced. Now we're just going to use an if statement in here. I'm just going to say cool if user parameters and our column was called top or bottom and it was the first row is equal to top. I just want to quickly ensure that it's always uppercase. So I say text upper because the user might type a lowercase camel case. We make sure it's always that then we do the max, right? Else we take this little bit over there and we say not max, but we say min. That should work. There we go. There we go. There we go. And let's quickly return it. Say close and load two. Paste it here under here so we can see where it is. So let's say we want to do the bottom five. Refresh. There's the bottom five. Let's say we want to do the top five. Top three. And say refresh. There's the top three. Well, now, isn't that excellent? So now you've learned how to use perimeters and doing top end and bottom end sorting in clustered and nested tables in Power Query. Well, BA Sensei, signing out!